Hey guys, how's it going? This is Chris Sampson. I, along with Marco Spiro, run the BC Spearfishing and Freediving Facebook page. Uh, we consistently have the same few set of questions. Uh, what equipment do I need to get started? Uh, what wetsuit do I need, etc. So I just wanted to make uh, one centralized place where people can get some tips and tricks uh, to get started to dive in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, uh, feel free to watch. Okay, so my first suggestion would be to look for some training. There's a lot of great providers here in British Columbia. There's bottom dwellers on Vancouver Island. They teach free diving as well as harvesting packages. Uh, so if that's something you're interested, uh, you could always go to Vancouver Island or if you live there, uh, nice and convenient. Uh, there is Oceanoid here in Vancouver. That's who I got my training through and I'm continuing my training through. Uh, they're great people, very friendly. Uh, I can't say enough good things about them. And they're highly educated, years and years of experience. Uh, they also run contests and are very big in the free diving community, not just here in British Columbia, but all across Canada. So Oceanoid, great people. Uh, there is Luca with Sea to Sky Free Diving. I believe he spends his winters in the Philippines teaching and summers here in BC. Uh, so Luca, very, very competent diver, very knowledgeable and a great person, a great guy. So uh, uh, that's another option for you. Uh, there's Phil. Uh, Phil, he teaches the Paddy Free Diving course. Um, he is in the process of moving to Australia. Uh, I'm not sure if he's coming back. Uh, he teaches out of Dive Quest, or is it Ocean Quest? It's one of those dive shops in Vancouver. Uh, but yeah, he's another, another option for you. A great person, really friendly. Um, training is important for your safety, and it's important for the safety of your fellow divers. There's some things that you can learn on YouTube. There's some things you can't. Uh, plus, if you're just doing internet research, you don't know what's valid, you don't know what's accredited. Uh, so again, I highly, highly suggest getting training. It also opens up many different doors for you. Uh, when you are going out on dive trips, many of them require some sort of a certification. And there's many divers out there that will not dive with you unless you're certified. So it might seem like a big investment for a training course, but it's your life. You can't, you can't put a value on it. You can't free dive if you're deceased. And you don't want to see a fellow diver in distress and not be able to rescue them. So uh, again, first and foremost, look for training and, and it's gonna open up many doors for you and make you a better diver. Oh, and, and just a quick side note, I'm filming this May 31st, 2020, so providers could change. There may be more on the market. I know Marco Spiro is also very, very knowledgeable, a good spearfisher, a good free diver, and he's in the process of uh, getting his training certification. So. Uh, that's pretty exciting, so keep an eye out for Marco uh, in the near future. Okay, so when, when it comes to purchasing a wetsuit, I'm not going to recommend any specific brands, but I will recommend a specific neoprene. Uh, a lot of manufacturers make their wetsuits out of Yamamoto neoprene. It's uh, very, very stretchy, offers a lot of warmth, and uh, very comfortable. Uh, so it's highly sought after and, and seems to be coming out at a more relatively affordable price. Um, I would suggest buying the best wetsuit you can afford. Uh, and, and don't cheap out. You can get really cheap wetsuits off Amazon, uh, but the neoprene is inferior. It will compress after a few dives and just becomes cold uh, in, in no time at all. Uh, if you spend an extra few hundred dollars and get an extra half hour to hour out of each dive come winter time, uh, the investment pays for itself in, in, in three or four dives. Um, so a lot of people don't know if they should get a five millimeter or a seven millimeter wetsuit. Um, I started off with a seven millimeter. Uh, I dove all winter, stayed nice and warm and comfortable and continued using that seven millimeter in the summertime and I was still comfortable. Um, I will admit slightly warm, uh, but I'd rather be a little bit on the warm side than too cold and hypothermic. Uh, so what I ended up doing is getting myself a five millimeter for the summer and a seven millimeter for the winter months. But hands down, if you can only afford one suit, because they are expensive, uh, get yourself a seven millimeter. Uh, now, 
get an open salt wetsuit as well. Uh, there's a lot of information on YouTube and the internet to research uh, what open cell wetsuits are, uh, but the neoprene uh, on the inside does not have a lining. Uh, they're very, very sticky, uh, very fragile. You need lubrication to get into them, uh, but it goes right against your skin and acts as sort of a form of blubber. <laughs> uh, so, so hands down, get yourself an open cell wetsuit. Um, sizing can be difficult unless you're getting a custom suit. Um, when I started free diving, I was coming off a shoulder injury. I'm an amateur boxer and I wore my shoulder out. Uh, I was putting on a little bit of weight. Uh, when I bought a wetsuit, uh, I was heavier than I wanted to be. Uh, so I got one size smaller and when I put it on, it was too big. Uh, but it was good incentive for me to lose a bit of weight. Uh, so if you're buying your first wetsuit, you have a couple extra pounds, you know, plan, plan on losing some weight, uh, get yourself that smaller suit and you won't regret it. Uh, free diving, you burn a lot of energy, you burn a lot of calories and you can lose weight in no time. Uh, so that would be my tip and suggestion for you there. So another suggestion when you're looking for lubricant for your open cell wetsuit, get yourself uh, something non-petroleum based, eco-friendly and non-scented. If you got a petroleum based hair conditioner, uh, you're going to be putting that into the ocean, which obviously isn't good for marine life. And if you have a scented hair conditioner, uh, that can actually scare away fish. They don't like the smell, nor do they like the chemicals. Uh, I grabbed this Live Clean uh, eco-friendly conditioner. It's uh, non-scented. I mix it in a bottle with water, just about a little bit, a few squirts. I shake this around and then spray it right inside of my wetsuit. Uh, using a spray bottle, you're not gonna create as much of a mess. You're gonna utilize more of your hair conditioner. This stuff is about $5 a bottle, and it's just much much more efficient uh, over, all, all around. When you take a free diving course, they're gonna go into a lot of depth about weighting and the importance of it. I'll just give you a quick rundown. Ideally, you wanna be neutrally buoyant at 10 meters. So you swim down to 10 meters, and you should not float, you should not sink. You wanna remain neutral. When you go deeper, you're gonna start sinking. Your neoprene is gonna compress as well as the air in your lungs. When you get back to that 10 meter mark, you wanna be positively buoyant and start floating up to the surface. In the event of a shallow water blackout, you want your dive buddy to be able to see you. In our waters, it is green, it is pitch black half the time, and we get strong currents. So very, very important to be properly weighted. Uh, a lot of new free divers uh, can't seem to get themselves down. It is a challenge with so much neoprene, but a solution is not to overweight yourself. Um, you're, you're way better to stay positively buoyant, as frustrating as it may be in the earlier stages, it's, it's for safety. Uh, so take a course, learn the weighting, um, and get efficient at duck diving, and, and soon diving with minimal weight will be easy. Uh, it just comes with practice and efficiency. Uh, I myself, I'm about 155 pounds, I'm 5 foot 8, I got an athletic build and I rock 10, 10 pounds with a, a 7 millimeter suit and I rock 8 pounds with a 5 millimeter wetsuit. If you're looking for a free diving mask, there's many of those too on the market. Uh, what I would suggest is getting yourself a mask with some sort of UV protection. Uh, even in the winter time, you can end up getting a sunburn or a tan with all the reflection off the water. Uh, keep in mind, all that UV is also going into your eyes and it's important to protect them. Uh, so with a bit of a UV protection, uh, you're going to ensure no eye damage. Um, I like filming all my adventures. It's something I can look back on years from now. And uh, yeah, it gives me a bit of a memory and yeah, just fun, fun thing and fun project for me to do. Uh, so I like getting a mask that has a GoPro mount. Um, when you get a spear gun in your hand, it's hard to film uh, at the same time. Uh, so having this little mount uh, pays for itself. You can get uh, external GoPro mounts. I don't find they are, are very useful. So yeah, pretty, pretty good mask. This one here was quite expensive. I think it was 140 bucks. Um, there's much cheaper ones out there, but again, worthy investment. I don't think there's anything more irritating than having a foggy mask. So another tip that I learned off the internet is to uh, take some toothpaste to the inside of the mask when it's new. 
uh, when they manufacture these masks, uh, silicone can get on the lens. That silicone can cause fog. If you put toothpaste on the inside of the lens, there's a chemical reaction that occurs uh, that helps to dissipate that residual silicone. Uh, so that is a good option. Another one is you can get a lighter and literally just torch the inside of your lens and that too is going to help uh, burn away that residual silicone. Uh, even at that, you, you will get some fog. Uh, this tip my wife uh, taught me, she grew up in Bermuda snorkeling. Uh, this is just Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo. It's tearless, so if it does get in your eyes, it's not going to burn. And if you just put some of that on the inside of your lens, it works wonders and acts as a defog much cheaper than the stuff that you'll find in a scuba shop and it's and it's honestly the same thing uh, a couple of friends of mine they put some baby shampoo in a little spray bottle with water and they just give it a couple of squirts on the lens every time they go in so yeah that's a pretty good tip and prevents fog uh, warmth is very important uh, before you get in the water and when you exit the water. Uh, the warmer you are when you enter, the longer you'll have in the cold water. Uh, I got this dive poncho off Amazon for $40. Uh, it is very, very warm, uh, blocks any, any potential wind. Uh, and it's also a great piece of equipment to get changed in so you're not getting naked in a parking lot. Uh, so spare some people uh, uh, nudity. Um, this one here, again, $40 off Amazon. There's a couple of local retailers here in BC that make and manufacture them. So it's always best to support local. And this one's quite primitive, quite cheap, uh, but some are very, very warm. They act as a robe. And if you get cold, uh, great, great investment, hands down. I highly suggest you find yourself a dive poncho. I'm, I'm pretty lazy, I'm not going to lie, I carry enough stuff with me on these dive trips, uh, but some of my friends, they also get big uh, 4 liter jugs of hot water, and when they're done their dive, they just dunk it over their head. Um, again, I'm too lazy for that one, but it, it's something many people do. It's a good idea, um, what I find is they often have extra water, so I usually get a, a, a little warm shower after anyways. Um, so yeah, good good tip, suggestion there. Uh, also, what you can do is bring some tea with you. Uh, ginger tea has hypothermic properties and warms up the core. So if you really don't like the cold, but you're keen on diving in the winter time, uh, that's gonna make it a lot more manageable. And there are many different dive bags on the market. This one I got from Mako, and I actually really like it. There's a lot of room. It holds my wetsuit, my dive fins, uh, I got this little. You're unhappy about something? <laughs> I got this little cell phone carrier and I put my fishing license in there so it doesn't get destroyed. Uh, but yeah, this makes life way easier when you're trekking out uh, to dive locations and it's a long height. Uh, this one here also holds the spear gun, there's a little spot on the side. Uh, many different manufacturers use the exact same bag. Uh, this, again, this one's from Mako, but they got them on Diving Sports and, and other various online retailers. If you're looking to purchase a spear gun, you don't need anything too long or crazy. Uh, this one here is a JBL 29 inch uh, uh, spear gun. Uh, it, it works for me, it's good for uh, hole hunting. You don't need a bunch of power to shoot in, into rocks. I'll be honest though, it is uh, a little bit on the small side. If I was to purchase another gun, I would go one size up. Uh, look for a gun in the roughly 90 to 100 at most centimeter range. Uh, but yeah, this one, again, nice gun, good quality. I'm happy with it. There's a lot of different suggestions and opinions when it comes to spear guns, so maybe if you have a recommendation, put something into the comments. Uh, thanks. And when it comes to technology, just keep it simple. Get yourself a dive light. This one here, I purchased a hand strap for. Makes it very easy to look inside of walls, cracks, caves. It opens up a different world underwater. And uh, get yourself a dive watch. This one here is free dive specific. You can buy a cable and download all your statistics, uh, which is pretty cool. I didn't do so though. I just need the depth, water temperature, and my intervals in between dives. So yeah, I just prefer to keep things simple. So dive watch and light is, is pretty essential to free dive. 
So when it comes to purchasing your diving equipment, there's a lot of great retailers out there. Uh, locally here in British Columbia, there's Oceaner. Uh, they make and manufacture free diving wetsuits. If you're looking for a custom suit, I would go with Oceaner, uh, support local and put money into our, into our local economy. Um, if that's not an option for you, their suits do come at a bit of a price tag. Uh, there is divingsports.ca. Uh, Diving Sports is a Canadian online store. I know the owner, he's a great guy. They have excellent customer service. Uh, they offer free shipping if you spend, I think, over 20 or $30. Um, and yeah, yeah, they, they price match. You get really good equipment at a very, very reasonable price. And something just in the works, uh, there may be a storefront uh, coming here to BC uh, in Coquitlam. So uh, for storefront free diving and spearfishing store. Uh, it's not confirmed yet. Don't get your hopes up, but that would be exciting to see in the future. Uh, another, another option if you're looking for an economical uh, uh, retailer, uh, you got MakoSpearGuns.com. It's an online store. They sell pretty good quality equipment. It's cheap if you are in the United States. Uh, in Canada, it can be quite expensive. Uh, seems cheap on paper, but when you factor in shipping costs and duty that you have to pay on the border, uh, you don't save an overwhelming amount of money. Uh, so my top choice is Diving Sports, uh, Mako, as well as, as, well as Oceaner. Uh, all three great companies. When I, when I take my vehicle, places i also carry a yoga mat with me it's kind of twofold uh, the yoga mat allows me to stretch out before i dive and the yoga mat also acts as a as a platform for me to get changed on so i don't get dirt and sand inside of my wetsuit so it makes my life a lot easier if you just bring some sort of a mat to stretch and get changed on when it comes to technology there's a lot of great apps uh, my my number one app uh, I, I got this even before I started free diving is Navionics. Uh, it's Ray Marine technology. Uh, you can uh, navigate yourself to anywhere locally in BC or really across the world. I got the Caribbean one if I do any traveling. Uh, you can scope dive locations, depths, currents, forecasts, everything on that app. Um, but yeah, really, really efficient for diving and planning your trips out and scouting out new areas. Another thing about Navionics is you can see the rockfish conservation areas. So if you're on a boat, uh, you can physically look at the line. And if you go over that line, it's going to tell you if you're in a conservation area uh, just by opening up a, a couple of features within the app. So very, very convenient and it ensures you will not be fishing in protected areas. Another app that I downloaded, it is called uh, Windfinder. Uh, my dad recommended this one, also designed for boating or specifically windsurfers. Uh, but Windfinder is a great app, shows you the direction the wind is going to be coming in in real time. Uh, so that one's free. Navionics does cost some money, but it pays for itself in no time. Uh, both apps I would suggest downloading. There's also a lot of great Facebook groups. There's ABC Spearfishing and Freediving. Uh, that's the one locally out of Vancouver. Uh, if you guys dive around Vancouver Island, there's Vancouver Island freediving, spearfishing, and snorkeling. Uh, there's a freediving Facebook group out of Eucala. If you guys go and, and dive or live in that area, there's West Can Spiros. There's Vancouver Island Visibility Report. Uh, so if you want some Viz uh, intel, uh, you can check that Facebook group out. And there's the Lower Mainland Visibility and Conditions Report, something along those lines. So same thing, if you're looking for visibility reports, uh, you can join up those Facebook groups. Uh, they do encourage you guys to, to give some information as well. Uh, so if you recently dove, uh, you can also post on that group and help fellow divers out, uh, scuba and free divers. Okay, so post dive, I wash everything in this tub, uh, fill the tub up with water and uh, vinegar. Vinegar is going to kill any bacteria and prevent your equipment from stinking and causing any funky rashes. Uh, from time to time, I'll also rinse all my equipment off uh, with some water and, and uh, some essential oils uh, to keep it smelling good. And then I'll dry everything on this rack 
You know, I'm in a condo, so roll with the punches. Be a lot more convenient if I had a house, but hey. What are you doing? I'm making noise. All right guys, so that was just some tips and tricks to make your life a bit easier diving here in the Pacific Northwest. If you have any additional tips that you'd like to suggest, uh, please, <laughs> please do so in the comments. Um, makes everyone's life a lot easier. I didn't find or discover any of this stuff. I just dive with a lot of knowledgeable people uh, that are willing to, uh, to share their knowledge with me. Uh, that's me sharing it with you. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you learned something, and yeah, feel free to comment and uh, offer up your 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 suggestions. Uh, safe diving, might see you out there. Uh, peace and love.